Previously on the Amagi, a young alien with a tail is sent to Earth and raised by a nice old man until that old man dies and the alien boy meets a ragtag group of pals. They do a lot of martial arts fighting, fight off threats that come to Earth, and he dies more than once, coming back every time. Well, I guess that depends on where in the timeline we're talking. But now Goku's all grown up, and he's meeting all sorts of new people even now that could potentially pose a threat to him and his planet, or even his universe. Let's jump back in. Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, we just released some brand new merch. If you'd like to show your support for the channel even further while at the same time repping stylish clothing, be sure to check that out as well. The store is linked below. YouTube's been unsubscribing users from channels lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Amagi. And with that out of the way, Let's get into the video. Granola the Survivor Saga Sometime later, Goku and Vegeta return to Beerus' planet to continue their training. Goku catches the oracle fish for Whis, so that he can inject him with some vitamins to help him sleep due to him currently having insomnia. Following this, Goku has a sparring session with Whis, transforming into a perfected Ultra Instinct at will. Despite the power-up, he is still not able to land a blow on the angel and is told that obtaining Ultra Instinct is merely the first step, and now he must learn greater control over it. The thought of being able to grow stronger still excites Goku as he continues sparring. As he and Vegeta continue their separate training, Goku ponders which one of them will be the strongest in the universe, even asking Whis if he knows of anyone stronger than them. When the Oracle Fish wakes up, she repeats her prophecy that soon the strongest warrior in the universe will rise up. Goku and Vegeta then pester the fish for answers as to who it is, though she refuses to answer and Goku continues his training. Whis asks Goku what the fundamental difference is between himself and the angels. After a quick demonstration where Goku finds himself whacked on the head by Whis's staff, Whis explains that they are always in the Ultra Instinct state, whereas Goku transforms in order to access it, believing that he equates Ultra Instinct to his transformation. Goku then realizes that he must learn to use Ultra Instinct in his normal form, to which Whis tells him that doing so will free him of his stamina drain, and that the transformation should be used as a last resort when he requires to surpass his limits. Over the next few weeks, Goku makes significant progress with his training. When both he and Vegeta decide to head back to Earth to meet up with the Heaters members, Oil and Maki, who have requested their assistance in defeating a powerful villain, Whis marks his gi once again with his signature. They board the Heaters spaceship, and with 18 days until they reach their destination, Goku decides to take advantage of the ship's chef and the gourmet cooking. They arrive on Serial, with Goku alongside Vegeta flying to the villain, unaware of them being tricked by the Heaters. While they're flying past a ruined city, a bunch of random key blasts appear in front of them, with the two barely able to dodge. Goku, using his refined Ultra Instinct, is able to have an easier time dodging the blasts before landing on the ground and being surprised that the blast didn't appear from there. Goku sees another barrage of blasts and proceeds to dodge them, but is eventually caught by one with it striking one of his vital points. Goku recovers with a Senzu Bean and is called out by Vegeta for relying on his Ultra Instinct too much, to which Goku agrees. Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan, spotting Granola and firing an energy wave at him, but the latter dodges and instantly teleports behind him, much to the former's surprise. The Serialian unknowingly reveals that he's the villain and knows the Saiyan race, much to Goku's shock, with Goku asking Vegeta if he knows of the Serialians, which Vegeta does not. Goku's then caught off guard when Granola uses a similar technique to Hawkeye and asks Vegeta if he wants to work together, which gets declined. Goku is told by Vegeta that he should go first as payback, which Goku agrees and descends to the ground, declaring that he's the first to fight. Goku is asked by Granola if he can turn into a great ape, but Goku declines, stating that he can't pull off that transformation anymore. Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan God, and they engage in combat, with Goku struggling to fight before using Ultra Instinct in conjunction with his form to dodge Granola's attacks. Goku is eventually struck in one of his weak points and reverts back to base form. Goku is now aware of how Granola is able to spot his weaknesses and listens as to why Granola wants revenge on Frieza. With the knowledge of his intentions, Goku questions the former if he's really an enemy. Goku sees Granola powering up and then says he cannot be called the strongest that easily and turns into Super Saiyan Blue, fighting equally with the latter. Goku battles against Granola in and around a forested area, dodging blast and blow alike before Granola swings around a tree by his scarf to deliver a flying kick to Goku. Goku recovers and stands his ground against the Serialian's heavy blows, letting out a raging inferno of ki that obliterates the surrounding area. Granola notes with his evolved right eye that the flow of blood and movement of cells within Goku's body has altered. Goku has combined Ultra Instinct with the perfected Super Saiyan Blue form. Goku begins to move around Granola at incredible speed, evading his attacks before firing off a power powerful Kamehameha at point-blank range. Granola, however, is still able to land his pressure point attack at a vital point in Goku's neck as he's hit by a wave. 
As the dust clears, Granola is mildly damaged, but Goku is much worse for wear, having dropped down to his base form. Goku sticks to his belief that a true practitioner of Ultra Instinct should have no weak points and that his training must be lacking. Granola causes the ground beneath Goku's feet to swell and explode upwards with a fearsome energy that Goku struggles to counter. Goku desperately escapes with instant transmission and lands by Vegeta, noting that Granola's technique is similar to Moro's. Vegeta informs Goku about his discoveries. The Serialians were a race that were wiped out by the Saiyans under Frieza's command long ago. The Saiyan pair realize that Granola is the last surviving Serialian out for revenge, and that the Heaters lied to them about his villainy, reasoning that nothing less than beating him will allow them to convince Granola that the Saiyans are no longer his enemies. Goku claims to still have hope of victory and transforms once again into perfected Ultra Instinct. As Granola reels with shock, he cannot detect any pressure points. Goku attacks again, only this time Granola is unable to perceive his movements as the Saiyan launches a lightning fast assault that tears off his sniping goggles and knocks him around the forest. Goku tries to reason with the vengeful warrior, but Granola is unmoved and attacks Goku viciously. He's unable to penetrate the Saiyan's autonomous defense and finds his blow halted by Goku's telekinesis before being lifted into the air and punched by a series of key blasts to the stomach. Vegeta believes the battle is won, but notices that Granola's energy has not dropped as much as it should. He then detects Granola's power coming from elsewhere. Granola expresses surprise at the strength of the Saiyans. However, Granola may have underestimated Goku, but has not yet lost. He explains to a confused Goku that the Granola he is facing is not his true self. He split his power apart at the start of battle, taking some of the power of his true body and creating an illusion clone to fight. Vegeta finds the true Granola sitting in his spaceship and alerts Goku as the clone vanishes into thin air. But as Vegeta turns back to the ship, the true Granola teleports to Goku's location and strikes a pressure point directly over his heart that briefly stops it, causing him to drop out of perfected Ultra Instinct. A final devastating blow sends Goku crashing through the forest. Granola says that he wanted to save his true strength for Frieza, but having Goku fight a clone first worked to his advantage, as the accuracy of his perfected Ultra Instinct only drops over time. He then mocks Goku for falling for his trick and prepares to kill him with a Ki Blast, only to be interrupted by Vegeta. Shortly afterwards, Goku wakes up and immediately suffers intense pain from the pressure point attack Granola inflicted on him earlier and begins to observe Vegeta's fight with Granola. He begins to self-heal his wound so that he can get back into the action. Goku leaps back into the fight in the nick of time to save Vegeta from a killing blow. However, Vegeta gets to his feet and unexpectedly roundhouse kicks Goku into a nearby rock, angered at the thought of having the fight taken away from him. Vegeta then tells Goku that they had only ever fought together in the past when something needed protecting. Goku asks about his life which needs saving, though Vegeta scoffs at this and says he would rather die than team up with him. Unaware, Granola charges in to strike a pressure point over Vegeta's heart, though Goku is able to save him in time by pushing him away using a Ki-Eye. Granola asks how he was able to react in time, with Goku saying that he now has a read on his vital targeting strategy and it will not work anymore. The two begin to battle, with Granola seemingly ending the fight fast with a pressure point attack to the back of Goku's neck. However, Goku attacks Granola from behind, claiming that the same move will not work on him again. Granola attempts another attack, but Goku is able to move his pressure points and counters with a punch. Goku says that he cannot dodge the attack completely, but is able to shift his pressure points to avoid enough fatal damage. Granola praises his defensive ability, but claims he will not surpass him as his attacking force is not up to par. Vegeta stirs and once more gets to his feet, watching as Goku is sent crashing to the ground and drops out of perfect Super Saiyan Blue. Vegeta decides to take over, still not wanting to team up. He asks Goku to leave the fight to him and Goku agrees. However, Granola overpowers Vegeta and attempts to finish him off in one final sacrificial act. Goku tries to intervene, but the power of the attack stops him from getting closer. Monaito, who appears on the scene, calls out to Granola to stop, and the sudden distraction gives Goku the chance to knock Granola to the ground, calling both him and Vegeta stupid. Monaito tells Granola that he had lied to him as there was one Saiyan who did not earn his vengeance. Forty years ago, the man who had saved both Granola and himself was none other than a Saiyan named Bardock. When Monaito questioned Goku if there was any relation because of their resemblance, Goku was unsure because he was raised by Gohan on Earth. However, Vegeta soon reveals that Bardock was Goku's father, to the latter's shock. Goku soon remarks that he wished he knew more about his father, while Vegeta comments that the kindness really is genetic in Goku's family. Shortly afterwards, Gas emerges, having now become the strongest in the universe thanks to Elect's summoning of the dragon and making the wish. Both Goku and Vegeta were shocked to hear that Serial had Dragon Balls, and that that is where Granola got his strength. 
After taking down Goku, Gas focuses his efforts on Granola, proceeding to take him down with ease. As Monaito heals Goku of his wounds, the recovering Saiyan asks Vegeta to go get the Senzu bean that was stored away in his armor, and tells him to eat it. Goku attempts to buy him some time and heads back into battle as Super Saiyan Blue, but finds himself far outmatched. Granola soon returns to take over the battle in Goku's stead, who then watches events unfold with Vegeta. Granola appears to defeat Gas using his superior skill set, however, when Elec shows up and removes Gas's necklace, his instincts are unleashed, giving him access to far greater power than before, though he's initially in a wild and frenzied state. During his rampage, he quickly takes down Granola before savagely kicking Vegeta and taking him down. Goku rushes in with a punch, and though it's blocked, Gas is reminded of his battle with Bardock long ago and backs off. Gas soon snaps out of his madness as his body undergoes a new form. After Gas breaks Granola's arms and Elec fatally shoots him in the back, Vegeta gives his remaining key to Goku. Goku takes a deep breath and then goes perfected Super Saiyan Blue. Gas attacks Goku with a multitude of special weapon-based energy techniques, followed by using telekinesis to throw buildings at the Saiyan before striking him with a moving train. Goku flips up on top of the train and Gas joins him. Asking Goku to show his true strength, he notices that he does not seem to have the same fierce resolve that his father once had, and questions if he really is his son. Goku is sent into the lake below and begins to suffocate underwater. However, not satisfied by such a simple death, he returns Goku's counterattack right back at him. As Goku wonders how he's going to be able to defeat this opponent, Gas spots Monaito using his healing powers to partially restore Granola. Gas makes a beeline for Monaito, but before he's able to reach him, Goku grabs a hold of him and uses instant transmission to teleport them off of Serial. After Crash landing on another planet and greeting Jocko, Goku confidently states that Gas has an inferior version of teleportation than his own, and baits Gas to teleport to embarrassing positions. Next, Goku and Gas are teleported into the Galactic Prison where Gas is mocked by villains from the past. On a volcanic planet, Goku Goku appears nearby Whis and the Oracle Fish, followed shortly by a confused gas. Goku reveals his ploy. He leaves using instant transmission back to the galactic patrol ship he just left. From there, he quickly chains together a sequence of instant transmissions before finally landing back on Serial. Gas realizes that Goku has stranded him and is too far away to directly return to Serial with instant transmission. Unable to follow Goku back along their route, Gas furiously asks Whis for the direction to Serial, which he provides. Gas takes off into space at incredible speed. Goku regroups with the others, having bought them some time. Oatmeal is also present, having activated a mobile android mode to help out. In a hover car on the way to Monaito's house, Goku is contacted by Whis, who warns Goku that Gas is approaching him and will return in 20 minutes. At the house, Monaito tells Goku that he has something to show him, Bardock's Scouter. Oatmeal begins to play with the Scouter's stored audio, and Monaito recognizes Bardock's voice, warning him to escape with Granola from the battle with Gas 40 years ago. He tells him to stay alive, awakening a deep repressed memory within Goku of Bardock and Genai telling him the same thing as they sent him away from planet Vegeta before its destruction. As Goku recalls more memories of his parents, Goku comes to a solemn realization. He feels that he finally understands what the pride of the Saiyans is all about, and that he's lost faith in his own strength. When Gas returns to Serial, the Saiyans emerge and choose to fight together. They transform into their Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego forms and attack Gas. Vegeta launches a Sphere of Destruction, but Gas begins to push it back. Goku tries to help Vegeta, but realizing the futility of the struggle, Vegeta leaves Goku to barely hold it back himself as Vegeta attacks Gas directly. Goku is able to deflect the blast upwards, saving the city behind him from being destroyed, and attempts to join Vegeta, but he hastily orders him to back off and tells him that his Ultra Instinct is no different than it was before, and that he needs to figure it out quickly. Goku heads to a nearby plateau where he begins to meditate. Dropping back down to his base form, a barrier erects itself around Goku. Meanwhile, Gas defeats Vegeta, but just as he prepares to finish him, Goku saves him using the same barrier. He moves Vegeta to his side, and Goku makes his way down to Gas and begins to power up. Gas wonders if he will use one of the transformations that he has already used or something new. Goku, however, says the answer is neither, and that he has merely figured out the best transformation for pulling out his power. Goku transforms into true Ultra Instinct, confusing Gas, who believed that his silvery hair form was his maximum strength. Goku explains that he requires a tranquil and calm heart for his perfected Ultra Instinct state, but in his sign state, he can put his current emotions to better use, stating that his heart is no longer calm. Gas flies at Goku in a fit of rage and exchanges blows, with the heater coming off the worst. Goku follows up on his advantage, not letting Gas have a chance to regroup, and following a relentless attack, he finishes with a fiery kick that sends Gas flying. After Elect chastises Gas on his performance, Goku tells Elect that he doesn't have to force Gas to fight, as he's up for a tussle anytime. But Elect tells him that there will not be a next time. 
A burst of energy erupts from Gas, who gets to his feet, now with a severely aged appearance and yet more powerful than ever. He soon overwhelms Goku with his power, but he is saved by the timely appearance of Granola. Asking Goku if he's willing to bet everything on his strength, Goku attempts to hold off Gas long enough for Granola to power up a finishing attack. His attempts do not last long, however, but fortunately, Vegeta too shows up to help. When Granola finishes powering up his attack, Goku conjures up his giant spectral form and grabs a hold of Gas before tossing him to the edge of the planet's atmosphere. Granola finally unleashes his attack, and with assistance from Oatmeal, hits Gas head on. Gas falls to the ground, seemingly defeated but not dead, and Granola tells his siblings to take him away and never return to Planet Serial again, before apologizing to Goku and Vegeta for all that he's done. However, after Monaito heals Goku, Vegeta, and Granola to full strength, the Namekian is blasted through the chest by Gas, who refuses to give up. Goku and Vegeta transform and enter the battle yet again. Though the two are easily overpowered, Gas's body begins to decay as he takes damage. Soon afterwards, Frieza arrives and kills Gas and Elec with ease before turning his attention to Goku and Vegeta. The pair demand to know how he was able to defeat Gas despite his status as the strongest in the universe. Frieza remarks that it may be due to him being in another dimension, confusing the Saiyans. Goku and Vegeta are speechless at this news as Frieza transforms into a new form. He deems it Black Frieza and unveils the power by easily defeating his foes in their full-powered forms. Satisfied by their defeated state, he decides to spare them and takes his leave. Whis then appears and restores Monaito as a one-time special favor for Goku. Whis asks Goku and Vegeta to leave with him straight away as Beerus is unable to figure out how to make instant yakisoba. Goku asks Granola if he'd like to join them for training, though he refuses, instead wanting to find the Dragon Balls to fix the damage on cereal that he had caused. Monaito gives Goku his father's scouter just before they take their leave. Goku asks Whis if the strongest being in the universe that the Oracle Fish was talking about was actually Frieza, to which Whis responds that it could have been or it could be someone else who has emerged in the universe instead. Superhero Saga Following the battles on planet Serial and the startling revelation of Black Frieza, Vegeta and Goku, aware of having fallen behind to the Galactic Tyrant, continue their training on Beerus' planet. Dark Empire Saga In the manga, one of the Dark Dragon Balls travels back to the Battle of Namek and fuses with Frieza. With its power, the now Xeno Frieza is able to easily take down the Super Saiyan Goku. Xeno Goku and Xeno Trunks arrive to correct the timeline and help Goku fight Xeno Frieza. Xeno Frieza goes into his 100% full power state to block two Super Kamehamehas fired by Xeno Goku and Super Saiyan Goku, but the attacks give Xeno Trunks enough time to get behind Xeno Frieza and cleave him in half, in the same manner that Xeno Frieza's Death Saucer did it in the proper time, knocking the Dark Dragon Ball away from Xeno Frieza. The fight then continues as it's meant to, with the injured Frieza begging Goku for mercy and afterwards the timeline restores to normal. Prison Planet Saga at some points after the Tournament of Power, Goku and Vegeta are back to training with Whis on Beerus' planet. Future Trunks and Future Mai travel back in time and Future Trunks trains with Goku and Vegeta. Future Trunks is kidnapped and taken to the prison planet, so Goku, Vegeta, and Future Mai head there to rescue him. On the prison planet, Goku encounters another Goku. Both Gokus see that the other possess a form that the other does not have. Goku with Super Saiyan Blue and Xeno Goku with Super Saiyan 4, and so they wish to see who's stronger. The two of them seem evenly matched, but in the end, Goku defeats Xeno Goku, who notes that Goku is a step above him. Goku questions Xeno Goku, but finds out they're on the same side. Fu arrives and explains the situation and how to escape the prison planet by obtaining the seven special Dragon Balls held by the prisoners. In the anime, shortly afterwards, they're confronted by the evil Saiyan Cumber. After Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan 2 and attacks Cumber, he loses all reason, having come into contact with such an evil key, and mutates into a Super Saiyan Berserk, where he then begins to attack Vegeta instead. After Future Trunks arrives at Cooler, Cooler transforms to become Golden Cooler, and with his newfound strength, defeats Goku with a single punch, causing him to regain his senses. After Mai tosses him and Vegeta a pair of Potara, the two fuse to become Vegito in order to fight against Cumber. After using up all their power in the fusion, they return to their individual selves only to see a golden great ape Cumber standing in front of them. Goku attempts to battle it as a Super Saiyan but is quickly beaten and stepped on. In order to escape from being crushed, Goku transforms into Super Saiyan Blue and proceeds to use the Kaioken X-20, but the battle is interrupted by Fu who reviews Cumber to his normal size so he does not destroy the seal surrounding the prison planet. Cumber continues to attack Goku who now uses the form of Super Saiyan God but is still beaten and almost killed before being saved by Xeno Goku now with Xeno Vegeta. Vegeta tries to wake up Goku to get them all out of there when suddenly Goku reawakens into Ultra Instinct. With his counterpart in stunned silence, Goku quickly overwhelms and dominates Cumber. 
Goku looks at his counterpart before going back in to finish Cumber. Xeno Goku, knowing himself, asks everyone to grab onto him and uses instant transmission to teleport off the planet. Ultra Instinct Goku then defeats Cumber with a Kamehameha. Before he can finish him, Fuse Zamasu arrives and steals Cumber's body away, leaving Goku alone on the blowing up planet. Universal Conflict Saga Goku is saved by the Grand Minister who brought Goku to Zeno's planet and gave him new attire that resembled his own. The Grand Minister takes him to Universe 11 where both his allies and his enemies are surprised to see him. In the anime, without saying as much as a word, he enters into his Ultra Instinct sign state and swats Oren, who is in possession of Vegeta's body, off of future trunks to save him. As Zamasu and Hearts make a remark on Goku's godly power, an agitated Oren attempts to attack Goku, but he's easily overpowered and unable to land a single attack. With a single punch, Goku is able to separate Oren from Vegeta and then blasts away an incoming Kamin. He then stares up at Hearts, prepared to face him next. Goku hovers up to Hearts, confirming that he is the person he'd been told of when Kamin and Oren attack him in unison. Goku easily overwhelms them with his strength and reflexes and knocks them down again. After Kamin and Oren merge together to become Kami Oren, Goku briefly battles the merged warrior until Heart summons Lags, who appears within a large pointed glass shard that Heart sends towards Goku. Goku exerts all of his strength in destroying the shard and reverts back to his normal state in the process. Lags then uses the broken smaller pieces to attack Goku and severely injure him to the point that he falls down. Trunks saves him just in time from being hit by a vital attack, but then manages to get his own fight up in order to save Trunks, though he receives even more damage. When Heart sends Lags onward to Universe 3, Hearts vows to draw out Goku's true Ultra Instinct power. Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan and charges at Hearts, but is immediately brought down by his Gravity Burst technique. Just then, Shin teleports into the arena and he and Goku teleport themselves, Trunks, and Vegeta away. They arrive in Universe 7, where Piccolo and Android 17 join up with them in order to battle the core area warriors that appear. Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan and heads directly for Hearts, but is once again repeatedly slammed into the ground via his Gravity Burst technique. After Hearts powers up, Goku gets to his feet, ready for another round. Goku and Hearts begin fighting, though he is forced backwards by a barrage of punches. With little other choice, Goku powers up further into his Super Saiyan Blue state. Now able to compete with Hearts on equal grounds, he's pushed back as Hearts comments that Goku's desire to fight can only be satisfied by him, which Goku rebuffs. The two acknowledge that neither is still using their full power. When the fight commences again, Goku turns the tides on him and overwhelms Hearts with a Kamehameha. However, Hearts gets back on his feet and taunts Goku before using his gravity powers on him. When Hearts uses his Gravity Fist technique, Goku is shown to be at a disadvantage as Hearts begins to power up even further. Hearts draws his energy cubes towards him and charges at Goku hard enough to send him to the ground and out of his Super Saiyan Blue form. After Kamioren undergoes a transformation after merging with the power of the Universe Seed, Goku intervenes and stops one of Kamioren's punches aimed for Vegeta, but is far overpowered and caught in his grip. After struggling to break free, he enters into his Ultra Instinct state once more and instinctively dodges Kamiyaren's punches and energy blasts. Kamiyaren fires a mouth energy wave at Goku, which he stops in its tracks and sends back at his enemy. As he brings his opponent down to his knees, Kamiyaren fires another energy wave, but this time around is able to catch him. Goku withstands the energy blast and emerges in his mastered Ultra Instinct state, where he then proceeds to dominate the battle. When the other members of the Dragon Team launch an energy barrage at Kamiyaren, Goku fires off a powerful Kamehameha, which causes the red bio gem on Kamiyaren's chest to begin to crack. Goku charges forward and follows up with a strike to the gem, which causes Kamiyaren to shatter into pieces. Pieces. Exhausted, Goku reverts to his normal state. When Hearts is merging with the Universe Seed, Fuse Zamasu appears to defend him. He takes down the entire Dragon Team with a single blow each, but Goku manages to regroup himself and fights on. Unable to transform due to being exhausted of energy from recently using Ultra Instinct. He's at a disadvantage and Zamasu soon twists his arm around his back. He's saved by the appearance of Jiren and soon after hit. The three attempt to take on Zamasu but are pushed back by a pulse from the newly completed Universe Seed. Goku and the rest of the group prepare to face Hearts when he uses a collection of green orbs to attack and enclose the group in a tight space. Hearts takes Goku down with a single blow along with the others, but as they get to their feet, Goku is the first to attack, transforming into a Super Saiyan Blue. However, his momentum is halted as Hearts tells him that he can see through his movements and his heart before sending him flying backwards. After suffering through another onslaught, Goku suggests to Vegeta that they should fuse, not knowing when his Ultra Instinct may be available to him again. While his friends buy them time, Goku and Vegeta completely process to fuse into Gogeta. Gogeta eventually defeats Hearts and returns peace to Earth. Jiren asks, 
why they didn't fuse together during the Tournament of Power. Before Gogeta can respond, he defuses back into Goku and Vegeta individually. Vegeta finishes the explanation that it's because he never wants to fuse with Goku. Goku laughs off the comment, saying that next time he will deal with the enemy all by himself. Universe Creation Saga In the anime, at Capsule Corporation, Goku examines a strange bird he's found named Tokitoki, until it unexpectedly bites him on the nose after saying it has a stupid-looking face. Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin, and Android 17 join Goku's side in figuring out what the bird is when Xenotrunks and Xenopen appear from another dimension in search of Tokitoki and explain how important he is. Surprised, Goku asks what Beerus is doing and he explains to Goku his prediction of a strange bird appearing in Universe 7 and destroying all universes. The Gods of Destruction prepare to destroy everyone when Beerus halts them, wanting to take responsibility for his own universe. Goku and Vegeta head up to face Beerus and transform into Super Saiyan Blue. Goku charges at Beerus and throws a string of attacks at Beerus that are unable to land before being kicked away with ease. The fight is put to a halt with the arrival of Xeno Goku and Xeno Vegeta, who points out the roots belonging to the universe tree. Fu shows up shortly afterwards and explains his plans to create a new universe using the tree, which will come at the cost of other planets and life forms. After disappearing, Beerus unleashes his own power to counter the tree, halting it from being able to absorb energy for the time being. But unable to keep it up for long, Goku, Vegeta, and Xeno Trunks head off in order to search for Fu and put a stop to his plans. They're joined by Xeno Pan and Tokitoki, who manage to track down an area where they believe Fu will appear. Before he does, however, Turles and Bojack, who are sided with Fu, arrive with intentions of revenge from having been defeated years prior. As the two quickly become hostile, Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan Blue to confront Turles and his new evil Saiyan power. As they battle, Fu appears and Goku and Vegeta attempt to face him, but are struck in the back by energy blasts, as Turles and Bojack refuse to let them leave. The two continue the battle until Dogi Dogi, under the command of Fu, flaps his wings to freeze Goku and the others in place, allowing Fu to take the opportunity to capture Tokitoki and escape through a space-time distortion. Shortly afterwards, Goku and the rest of his group unexpectedly fall through a time distortion where they meet up with Xeno Goku and Xeno Vegeta once again, along with a very hostile and empowered Janemba. Believing Janemba to be another one of Fu's companions, Goku and Vegeta transform into Super Saiyan Blue and attack head-on, but find themselves unable to land a blow due to Janemba being given analysis on their alternate counterpart's abilities. Goku continues to battle, now alongside Xeno Goku, and the two finally land a punch just before Salsa and Poutine intervene. Goku and the others are drawn into battle once more with Janemba, and still at a disadvantage and with few options, Goku, Vegeta, Xeno Trunks, and Xeno Pan pool their Saiyan power into Xeno Goku and Xeno Vegeta, allowing them to enter into the super full power Saiyan 4 Limit Breaker state where they go on to finish off Janemba. Then he and the others are teleported to the location of the universe tree thanks to Poutine's magic. Shortly after arriving, Fu appears, followed by Tawa who teleports everyone away, leaving only Vegeta, Goku, and Fu left at the time rift. When Vegeta attempts to take on Fu, he's over taken when Fu uses Cumber's energy, that he's obtained for his own use, to turn Vegeta berserk. Goku transforms into Super Saiyan Blue and tries to aid Vegeta, but he is too taken over. The two enraged Saiyans flail wildly at Fu who easily fends them off before purifying them of their evil aura. With time running short, and the universe tree close to destroying their universe, Goku removes a Potara from his pocket that he retrieved from Salsa and tosses it to Vegeta, where they fuse once more into Vegito. New Space-Time War Saga In the anime, after Fu creates his new universe, Goku awakens alone in a strange and eerie alternate version of West City on Earth, wondering what's going on. He's attacked by the Frieza Force, including Frieza and Metacooler, while trying to escape from Fu's universe. He teams up with Hearts to fight the Golden Brothers, using Ultra Instinct Sign to fight and quickly overcome overwhelm Frieza before returning to his base form. However, the galactic tyrants are given a burst of power when they unexpectedly find themselves merged with a dark dragon ball. The two brothers are able to pressure Goku and Hearts until Broly arrives on the scene and takes down everyone with ease. After, Broly takes off after the warrior in black, and the crimson masked Saiyan leaves. An exhausted Goku sits on the ground and Hearts tosses him a senzu bean. Goku recovers and thanks Hearts as he brings out the four-star dragon ball and tells Goku that if the senzu bean still had the same effect in the space-time, then the same should be true for the Dragon Balls. The two decide to collect all the Dragon Balls and use them to escape. They head to Capsule Corporation where Goku collects the Dragon Radar. Turning it on, he picks up two signals, one of which belongs to Hearts and the other up above them. Goku teleports himself and Hearts to Planet Vegeta. There, the Crimson Masked Saiyan arrives and informs Goku that he is his opponent before transforming into a Super Saiyan Rose. Goku realizes that this is indeed Goku Black, revived through unknown means. 
Black proclaims that he will defeat his original counterpart and prove himself to be superior. Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue and the two fight, with hearts following them after transforming into super hearts. However, Goku Black defeats the two, holding the former by the neck and swiftly tossing him aside. However, Goku unexpectedly returns and appears behind the Crimson Masked Saiyan in his Ultra Instinct sign state. The Crimson Masked Saiyan blasts Goku at point-blank range, though it causes no damage to him. Goku proceeds to avoid every one of his opponent's attacks and appears to have the advantage. The Crimson Masked Saiyan takes to the skies and fires off a couple of energy blasts to leave planet Vegeta on the verge of destruction. Goku attempts to use instant transmission to escape, but is unable to as he cannot sense any other key signatures. However, much to everyone's surprise, Cell appears and teleports everyone away just in the nick of time. Goku asks Cell how he was able to come back, though Cell simply says it's the same as how Hearts was able to. Vegeta asks why he's decided to save them, but Cell tells them to be patient and hear what he has to say. Two other figures then appear behind the group, with Goku and Vegeta surprised at their identity. Goku and the others join Gohan and his group in a nearby cavern, and shortly afterwards, Shroom appears along with Salsa and Poutine and explains that Cell is lending a hand in taking the Crimson Mass Saiyan. With a powerful enemy to face and Goku not having yet mastered Ultra Instinct, Shroom and the other demons open up a doorway to a room similar to that of the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. Goku and Vegeta go inside where they face phantoms in the guise of enemies from the past and seemingly complete their training in time. Shortly afterwards, Goku's Ultra Instinct state runs out. However, the Crimson Mass Saiyan enters into his Super Saiyan Rose full power state, and Goku and Vegeta are left with no choice but to fuse into Gogeta once again. Gogeta successfully defeats the powerful adversary and defuses. The warrior in black reappears, carrying the full set of Dragon Balls, which he uses to send everyone out of the pseudo-universe. Goku finds himself back in the crack of time where he encounters a younger-looking Fu who has absorbed Dogi Dogi. When Vegeta appears, Goku fuses with him again to become Gogeta and fights alongside Xeno Gogeta, but the two are quickly overpowered and defuse. Fu then throws the Vegetas into a dark vortex to prevent further fusion, but the Gokus receive some unexpected backup in the form of Kronoa. Kronoa heals the pair's injuries and asks that the two power up to their limit. She then performs a technique that allows the two Saiyans to merge their ki together. They attack with a combined Kamehameha which breaks through all of Fu's barriers, forcing him to block it himself. Despite Fu stating the attack was dangerous, Xeno Goku notes that even with this immense power, he and his alternate self are still unable to defeat the Dark King. Fu begins absorbing power from the universe tree and to an extent all the universe itself. When Fu tries to attack Kronoa, Goku grabs one of Fu's tendrils and rips it off. The energy given off by the tendril at first begins to overwhelm him, but Goku manages to harness it for his own by also harnessing the Universe Tree's power to gain Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, Universe Tree Power. Goku and Fu engage in an epic battle, climaxing with a powerful beam struggle that ends with Goku managing to finish him with a Kamehameha. Fu finds it impossible that the universe has so much potential, and with those seemingly being his last words, he's defeated with a smile on his face. After the battle, Goku is sent back to where he came from after Tokitoki uses his powers to restore Universe 7. Supreme Kai of Time Saga Meanwhile, on Earth, Goku enjoys a nap during his farm work. Coming around, he's approached by a mysterious guide. After introducing himself, he tells Goku that he has been invited to the Super Space-Time Tournament, a tournament to determine the strongest fighter from every space-time. Obviously excited by the prospect, Goku quickly accepts and is teleported away to the tournament's location. Once there, Goku reunites with Gohan, Piccolo, Vegeta, Hit, Jiren, and Yamcha. The mysterious guide reappears and explains the rules of the tournament before the participants are teleported to the battlefield. On the battlefield, Goku quickly crosses paths with his timeline counterpart, Zeno Goku, who are each elated at the prospect of fighting each other once again. However, Zeno Goku states his intention with the host of the tournament, Ios. Before he can explain his reason as to why, the two Goku are ambushed by another team. They quickly take them down before setting sights on each other as the prospect of facing another Goku is too exciting to pass up. Goku transforms into Super Saiyan Blue, while Zeno Goku transforms into Super Saiyan 4. They begin their rematch until it's halted due to members of their team finding time fairies, which return them to the main hall having progressed through the initial round. For the second round, Goku is sent to a stylized version of Planet Vegeta along with Jiren, where they face off against the Super Saiyan 3 warrior in black and transforms into Ultra Instinct Saiyan ready for battle. Goku requests that he be allowed to fight him alone due to his opponent being a fellow Saiyan, and asks his opponent who he is after he appears to know his true Saiyan name, though he does not give a clear answer. The two engage in combat, and Goku is able to prevail after overpowering him in a beam struggle. Goku then heads to the Time Nest where he sees Kronoa having been defeated by Eos in her Time Power Unleashed state. 
Goku turns to Aos and thanks her for hosting the tournament, but then asks that she not erase any timelines as there are still living beings in them. Aos declines this request and attempts to use her powers to freeze him, but Goku teleports behind her and transforms into his Ultra Instinct sign state. The two battle until Goku uses his instant transmission to appear in front of Aos before letting off a Kamehameha at point blank range. Ayos acknowledges the danger that Goku possesses and vows to eliminate him. Before she can attempt to do so, Demigra invades and she forms a temporary alliance with Goku to take on the greater threat. Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan Blue and lets off a Kamehameha against Demigra, who uses his magic to reflect the attack while simultaneously empowering it with darkness. In response, Goku uses Kaioken in an attempt to match it but is still overpowered. He fights on valiantly as he tries to protect Kronoa but is beaten for his efforts. Thankfully, Vegeta arrives and the two use fusion to form Vegito to confront Demigra. Peaceful World Saga Ten years after the defeat of the evil, pure Majin Buu, Goku kept training despite the fact that Earth was at peace. He's training with his youngest son, Goten. When the tournament comes around, Goku forces Goten to cancel his date to enter and Goten shows disdain towards Goku's ruling. During the 28th World Martial Arts Tournament, Goku battles Majin Buu's reincarnation, Oob, who was born after King Yama heard his request made 10 years ago. However, Oob was experiencing an extreme bout of stage fright, so Goku was forced to make several insults towards his family and obscene gestures to try and get him angry enough to fight and overcome his fear. After a short yet intense battle, Goku apologizes and explains to Oob that his insults were simply meant to coax him into using his true power. Goku then takes Oob to train him, to one day help in being the protector of the planet, although he later tells Oob that after the training, he desires to fight him again, not only to discover the strongest out of the two, but the strongest in the entire universe. They then fly off in the distance. Black Star Dragon Ball Saga Five years after leaving the 28th World Martial Arts Tournament with Majin Buu's reincarnation Oob, Goku finishes training Oob, and they've just finished testing their abilities against one another in the hyperbolic time chamber. Soon after Oob leaves for the lookout and Goku finds out what's going on, an accidental wish by Emperor Pilaf transforms Goku back into a child. This wish was made on the Black Star Dragon Balls. As a result, Goku must travel the galaxy and return them to Earth to prevent the planet from exploding from the negative energy created by the wish. After leaving Earth in the spaceship designed by Bull Bulma, a piece of the ship falls off and Goku, Trunks, and Pan are forced to crash land on the planet Emeka to get the parts needed to repair the ship. A group of merchants swarm Goku and the others and they realize they have to get to the Gold Star Hotel to hide from these swarms of sellers. They then realize that they're being charged every second for everything in the hotel including the lights. They escape without paying and stumble upon the house of an old couple and their children. They talk about Don Ki, the ruler of the planet and how he mistreats his people. Just then, Don Ki's men come and repossess the old couple's house, saying that they are behind on payment. Goku suggests that they go and fight Don Ki, but the couple says that it's impossible because of his grand army. On their way back to the ship, Trunks drops the dragon radar and it's swallowed by a small robot named T-2006, nicknamed Giru who says he cannot give the radar back to them because it's already integrated into his system. Meanwhile, Goku notices the ship being dragged away by Don Ki's men. He tries to use instant transmission to teleport them to the ship, but after two failed attempts, he realizes that he cannot use it with his small body. They're forced to travel to Don Ki's palace on foot to recover their ship. Pan decides that they'll use a stealth operation to recover the ship and would only result to fighting as a last resort. After briefly sneaking around, a large rock falls on Trunks' head and Giru starts making noises that alarm the guards. The guards open fire on Goku and the others and Pan says they must go fight now, so Goku agrees. Pan jumps into the carrying car while Goku moves the ship onto the car and Pan drives the ship out of the palace with Goku and Trunks. While escaping, Don Ki's henchmen, Gale and Sheila, fire a combined energy wave at Goku, but Goku deflects it back with ease towards Legic, Don Ki's right-hand man, who recognizes them as Saiyans. Goku and the others escape, but Trunks says that they have to go back into town now for more parts due to Pan's reckless driving. Once they reach the town, everyone hides and Trunks finds three of them on Emeka's most wanted list. While running from Don Ki's soldiers, they fall into the house of a nice old couple who offer them food after realizing Goku and company mean no harm. They say that Don Ki made it a law that no one is allowed to own a ship so that no one could escape the planet, including the old couple. Pan gets fed up and convinces Goku and Trunks to go face Don Ki head on. They turn themselves into the police and get brought to the palace. Once there, Goku, Trunks, and Pan incapacitate Gale, Sheila, and all of Don Ki's guards. Then Goku blasts his way into Don Ki's throne room. Don Ki six Legic on the fighters after capturing Pan in an energy chamber. Legic says that he'll fight Goku, but for his own satisfaction. After a short fight, Goku defeats Legic as a Super Saiyan and they take down Don Ki and make him give everyone free rent and give them back their ships free of charge. 
plus Don Key gives them the parts they need for free when they leave Emeka. They then land on an unnamed planet where everything is larger than life. Goku finds the four-star Dragon Ball in the tooth of a giant and they go on to the next planet. On planet Gelbo, they find the six-star Dragon Ball in the hair of the princess of the village, Lina. Trunks asks for the ball, but her fiancé Doma says that they were in a large problem already. The amphibian creature Zunama was threatening the village with his power to create earthquakes and volcano eruptions by shaking his whiskers if they did not give him a wife. Goku decides that he would help them out in exchange for the Dragon Ball, and so they agree. Pan comes up with the idea to disguise Goku as Lina, but it does not work out, so Trunks poses as her instead. Zunama comes and starts getting impatient, waiting for Lina, and threatens to shake his whiskers. Then Trunks arrives, dressed as Lina, and Zunama takes him to his lair. Trunks gets Zunama tipsy, and Goku arrives with Pan and Doma. Doma slices off Zunama's left whisker with a pair of huge scissors, and as he cuts off the left one, Zunama awakens in a drunken rage. He begins to wiggle his whiskers, and an earthquake begins to come, but stops soon after while Zunama continues to wiggle his whisker. Pan realizes that he cannot cause earthquakes, he can only predict them, but now he's so tipsy that he did not realize that the quake was over. Suddenly, a really big earthquake erupts, and Goku and the others leave the cavern with Zunama. Goku who then stops the huge volcano with a Kamehameha, saving the city and winning the Dragon Ball. Just as they're leaving the planet, Bon Para, one of the mysterious Para brothers, arrives and takes the ball from Pan's hands using his telekinesis. In shock, the three Z fighters just watch as he leaves. Goku then jumps into the ship with Pan and Trunks, and they chase after the brothers' spaceship. The brothers trick them onto the asteroid Bihei, inhabited by huge, bloodthirsty, worm-like creatures called Muma. The Para brothers escape and fly to the planet Lud. They go to Cardinal Machi Machi, who tells them that they have failed, and that Goku has another Dragon Ball in his ship that they failed to get and they must go retrieve it. They travel back to find Goku and the others and they get hypnotized by the Para Para Boogie until they're saved by the hungry Muma after they wake up. Pan goes aboard the Para Brothers ship to find the Dragon Ball that they stole. She accidentally activates the autopilot and is brought to Lude. There she's captured and turned into a doll for the evil Lord Daltaki. Goku shows up with trunks and kills Cardinal Machi Machi, who reveals that he's actually two parts, the body and the whip. The Daltaki turns everyone except for Goku, himself, trunks, and Pan into dolls and feeds them to the machine deity, Lude. Daltaki then awakens Lude, who takes him and Pan inside of his body to gain their energy. While Lude fights Goku and Trunks, Pan forces Daltaki to tell her the weakness of the seemingly invincible Lude. Daltaki reveals that Goku must strike the outside of Lude's mechanical heart, while Pan strikes the inside at the exact same time. After multiple tries, Goku finally succeeds and destroys Lude, freeing all the people, including Pan, who is turned back to normal. Goku then takes back his Dragon Ball, and they leave the planet. Baby Saga as our heroes arrive on the supposedly deserted planet M2, they continue on their quest for the Black Star Dragon Balls. They find themselves caught in a trap by the planet's inhabitants, mutant robots, and that Giru was deceiving them all along. Pan manages to escape and later rescues Goku, who does battle with the robotic group of commandos known as the Sigma Force, and their leader, General Rildo. However, both he and Pan are captured again and taken to Dr. Mew for studying. Giru has a change of heart though and manages to rescue the trio thanks to a clever plan by Trunks. It's then that we see Mew's true creation, Baby, who breaks free from his containment after being revived, but stopped by Goku and the others. However, as a defeated and injured Dr. Mew escapes, a piece of Baby's scattered remains jumps onto his skin, later bursting out of Dr. Mew and reforming into his original state. Baby is in fact the last surviving Tuffle, the original inhabitants of Planet Vegeta, or Planet Plant. Baby is a machine mutant who was created by Dr. Mew. However, Baby states that he is Dr. Mew's master and that Dr. Mew was designed to revive him. Goku, Trunks, and Pan arrive on Earth to return the Black Star Dragon Balls, but soon discover that Baby has infected the population with mind-controlling eggs and chosen Vegeta as his new host. After a short fight with Baby, Goku discovers that he cannot sustain Super Saiyan 3 while still being a child. After being pummeled by Baby Vegeta, Goku is weak and defenseless. During this fight, however, Goku learns of Baby's one weakness. He is sensitive to taunts and easily angered. Meanwhile, Baby uses the revenge death ball to finish off Goku, but Kibito Kai arrives just as the bomb strikes to save Goku and bring him to the sacred world of the Kais. There, Old Kai hatches a plan to solve Goku's energy problem by regrowing Goku's tail. Progress is slow at first, but Goku has an idea on how to accelerate the process. After a very painful procedure where the tail is pulled out by a pair of pliers, Goku returns to the Tuffle Planet, where most of Earth's residents had migrated to, to confront Baby. During the long and difficult battle with Baby Vegeta, Goku is able to sustain his Super Saiyan 3 form, but is still unable to win. As he lies on the ground, defenseless, he gazes at Earth and realizes he's failed it. But instead of dying, looking at the Earth causes Goku to transform into the form of a golden great ape. With Pan's help, Goku regains control of himself and becomes Super Saiyan 4. Baby Vegeta 
is no match against a Super Saiyan 4. In desperation, Bulma, who's under Baby's control, uses a Blood Swave generator and causes Baby Vegeta to transform into a Golden Great Ape. Although Goku outclasses Baby in terms of speed, he is slowly worn down by Baby's power. Just as Old Kai loses all hopes of Goku succeeding, Kibito Kai removes Gohan, Goten, and Trunks from Baby's control using the Sacred Water from Kami's Lookout. After realizing that they cannot help by fighting the ape, they channel some of their energy to Goku. Goku eventually succeeds in defeating Baby Vegeta and leaves him defenseless. In desperation, Baby leaves Vegeta's body and tries to escape from Planet Tuffle, but Goku uses his Kamehameha attack to destroy Baby and blast his remains into the sun. Super 17 Saga a year after the defeat of Baby, Goku fights in the 31st World Martial Arts Tournament, having to fight in the Junior Division, with Mr. Satan saying that there's a height requirement. In the finals, his opponent wins by tickling Goku while he's talking to Vegeta, resulting in Goku falling out of the ring. Sometime afterwards, Goku and his family and friends were at home eating until a badly beaten up Trunks arrives, saying that he encountered Android 17, who told him to tell Goku to go to hell to set things straight. Goku leaves for hell, where he meets Dr. Mew and Dr. Jiro, who leave, making Goku very frustrated with no way out, until two of his most fierce enemies from the past drop by, Cell and Frieza. Goku manages to deal with both of them in his normal state. Realizing Goku's power, Cell forces out his tail and absorbs Goku. This only lasts for about 10 seconds since Goku finds a way out of Cell's body. After a fight between Goku, Cell, and Frieza, they show Goku a new technique that they learned in Hell, the Hell's Buster. They create a tornado-type spin that throws Goku down to the deepest part of Hell. While there, a strange old lady demonstrates various tortures, which evidently ends by freezing Goku in a block of ice. Meanwhile, Cell and Frieza wait to use a finishing move on Goku. Goku's end seems to have arrived until everyone realizes that the finishing move does not work on the living. Despite being frozen, Goku manages to hear their conversation. In retaliation, he breaks free, attempts the freezing technique on Cell and Frieza, and successfully freezes them, but accidentally shatters them. Still trapped in hell, Goku tries to find a way out. He asks King Yama to aid him, with King Yama responding that he does not know how to get Goku out. Piccolo contacts King Yama and asks him to transport him to Goku. Believing the plan is ludicrous, King Yama refuses, leaving Piccolo to destroy significant portions of heaven as a means to convince him. King Yama eventually follows through with Piccolo's idea and transports him directly to Goku, where he, with Dende's help, opens a gate between Hell and Earth to allow Goku to escape. Successfully escaping, Goku immediately leaves for the battlefield. Goku fights the newly fused Super 17 after reaching the battlefield. He eventually transforms into a Super Saiyan 4, but Super 17's ability to absorb his energy and grow stronger causes difficulties for Goku. With the help of Android 18, vengeful towards Android 17 for Krillin's death, Goku defeats Super 17 with the use of the Super Dragon Fist through the Android's stomach and chest. This attack presumably destroys Android 17's energy absorption devices. Goku then finishes off the Android with a Kamehameha, though he wounded Super 17's stomach, causing him to explode. Shadow Dragon Saga when the dragon, Shenron, is summoned to revive those killed by Super 17, the Dragon Balls crack and a different cigar-smoking dragon appears in his place. This black smoke Shenron promptly splits into seven shadow dragons, each with a cracked dragon ball in its body. Goku and his companions fight valiantly to defeat these new dragons. However, after six of the seven are defeated, Nachuron, Rage, Haze, Oceanus, Ice, and Nuova, in a series of many struggles, the one-star dragon Sin Shenron appears. Proving to be more than a match for the Super Saiyan 4 Goku, Goku is severely beaten by the most powerful of all the shadow dragons, losing his Super Saiyan 4 transformation and falling unconscious. Goku's friends provide him with their own power, Power, which makes Goku transform to super full power Saiyan 4, and finally becomes superior to Sin. Unfortunately, the evil dragon absorbs the other Dragon Balls into himself, becoming Omega Shenron. Even as an ultra full power Saiyan 4, Goku can't defeat the powered up dragon. He even combines two of his strongest attacks in the form of Dragon Hammer, but Omega still survives this. After Vegeta, now a Super Saiyan 4, joins the fight, they still can't beat him, so Vegeta suggests they fuse, to which Goku agrees, even mentioning that this will be special. Due to fusing Using Super Saiyan 4, Gogeta is born. However, the fused warrior does not finish off the evil shadow dragon before the fusion wears off due to wasting too much time. Later, Goku's power runs out and he reverts to his base child form. After being presumably killed by Omega's negative karma ball, Goku asks the people of planet Earth to send him their energy. The collected energy is not enough to defeat Omega Shenron, so Goku asks King Kai to help him by gathering energy from all over the universe, creating the Super Ultra Spirit Bomb. The Spirit Bomb is successful in destroying Omega Shenron. The 
people of Earth witness this and finally realize Goku's a hero. Afterwards, the real Shenron appears once again, saying that no more wishes will be granted for a long time. After convincing Shenron to grant one last wish and asking that all the people who were killed by Super 17 and the Shadow Dragons to be revived, Goku decides to accompany the dragon. Before leaving, Goku tells Vegeta that the lives of everyone are now in his hands, passing the role of protector of the Earth and anyone in need of help to Vegeta. Goku also visits Krillin, who has recently been revived by the last wish, and the two of them have one last fight before Goku flies off with Shenron. He then visits Hell to apologize to Piccolo for putting him through nothing but trouble, vowing to remember him for as long as he lives. With all loose ends tied up, Goku disappears along with Shenron. A century later, as an aged Pan watches the World Martial Arts Tournament, she catches a glimpse of a familiar face in the stands. Her grandfather, Goku, now grown up once again and without his tail. When she tries to follow him, however, he disappears. Goku leaves, since the Earth is at peace, but the narrator says he will always return when the Earth is in danger. Goku is then seen flying into the air, grabbing onto his power pole, calling for the flying Nimbus, and finally flies off into the distance, while yelling, till we meet again, guys. To be continued. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.